what looks like a cactus, smells like a corpse, and has flowers that would rival any star in the sky? This stinky succulent is perfectly adapted to attract flies while making humans want to skip lunch, and probably dinner too. This is the carrion plant. Hey, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Floralogic. Hold on to your nose hairs or they just might curl. Today we're talking about the stinkalicious Stapelia gigantea, otherwise known as the carrion plant. The carrion plant is the goth king of Southern Africa. And if that sounds like something you'd like to be, I have good news for you. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. You can buy as little as one square foot of land and officially call yourself a lord or lady. Each certificate also features a unique plot number so you know the exact location of your land. The best part is they work closely with global charities, Trees for the Future, and One Tree Planted, and they plant a tree for every order. It's a fun, novel way to support global reforestation efforts. Established Titles also told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or lady, we can build our little Florologic kingdom. You could officially include the title lord or lady on your credit card, plane tickets, dating profiles, etc. This also makes a great last minute gift. Established Titles is now running an early Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use the code ANIMALOGIC, you get an additional 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com slash ANIMALOGIC to get your gifts now and help support the channel. The erect, three centimeter wide green stems of the carrion plant make it the perfect cactus dupe. But this stinky Stanley is actually a succulent, which are defined by thick and fleshy tissue that is specialized for storing water. Cacti are a subgroup of succulents, so while all cacti are succulents, not all succulents are cacti. In the case of the carrion plant, this succulent is actually a member of Apocynaceae, the same family as milkweed. Other less cadaverous names for the carrion plant include giant toad flower, Zulu giant, and starfish flower. But if you want to find out how this succulent ended up with a name like carrion plant, just follow your nose. Carrion plant flowers emit a rotting flesh stench that is unmistakably stomach churning and definitely deserving of the moniker. This clustering succulent forms clumps that can sometimes reach one to two meters across. It's the most widely north-south distributed of the roundabout 29 species of Stapelia and can be found all over Southern Africa. Thanks to its unique characteristics, it can also be found as an ornamental on the shelves of the world's bravest and possibly most nose-blind succulent collectors. Jokes aside, there's a good reason for all the stink. The scent attracts all manner of death-loving carrion flies who are fooled into fertilizing the plant. Pollination by carrion flies even has a specific name, Sapromyophily. Rafflesia and the corpse flower, which we've already covered on our channel, are two other examples of plants that use this sneaky scent scam for pollination purposes. Unlike in the human world, there are certain advantages for plants that have major BO. Carrion flies, for example, are present year-round, so they can pollinate year-round as well. In the case of the carrion plant, their blooms unleash their stink onto the world and are ready for pollination in the fall, when shorter daylight hours trigger the blossoms to open. But why do flowers produce scent at all? Flowers are basically multi-sensory billboards for passing pollinators. The objective for the plant is to get the pollinators, which could be bees, flies, wasps, ants, butterflies, moths, or even hummingbirds and bats, to touch their reproductive structures. The pollinator, in turn, gets a yummy snack out of the deal in the form of pollen, nectar, or oils. It's a real you scratch my statement, I'll scratch yours situation. But in the case of carrion plants, this relationship between fly and flower is actually one-sided because the fly gets no reward whatsoever for paying a visit. Instead of offering a sweet snack, the carrion plant is an expert at what's called brood site mimicry. The flies see and smell the flower, and thinking they found a heap of rotting, stinking flesh, they oviposit. Or in layflies' terms, they lay their eggs. In the process of ovipositing, the flies will inadvertently touch the reproductive parts of the carrion plant, which is just what the carrion plant was hoping for. And this one-sided relationship only gets more toxic after the flies have left their eggs behind. Unlike actual rotting meat, the flower lacks the protein that the larvae need to survive, so they will inevitably die. One study even suggested investigating the carrion plant as a potential tool in fly control for this very reason. The carrion plant takes being a multi-sensory advertisement to the extreme, with not only its pungent perfume, but also its looks. It looks like a large fleshy starfish 
baking in the sun. And it kind of smells like one too. Its flower is one of the largest in the world, with these star-shaped blooms reaching up to 40 centimeters wide. They can vary in color from cream to pale yellow and are covered in red or pink zebra stripes and fringes of hair. Everything about the size, shape, color, and scent of this plant screams hairy rotten carry-on. A blowfly's dream come true. While the flies might be loving it, the same can't be said for people in certain regions around the world where the carry-on plant is being investigated for its invasive potential. In Pakistan, Honduras, Australia, Hawaii, and Venezuela, for example, it's already escaped cultivation. Like milkweed, carry-on plants produce seed pods, and the seeds themselves are adapted to wind dispersal, with each individual sporting a tiny parachute. In one square meter of carry-on plant, there can be up to 1,500 seeds. And with a 62% germination rate, these plants are more than ready to marry poppins down into new areas and start stinking up the joint. The carry-on plant was used by various cultures in Southern Africa as a medicinal plant to treat everything from hysteria to pain and to induce vomiting. Currently, it's being pharmaceutically investigated as a potential appetite suppressant. And I think it's working because just talking about this stinker is making me wish I skipped brunch. Despite their stink, carry-on plants are grown ornamentally by strong-stomached enthusiasts. They're relatively easy to propagate from stem cuttings or seeds. Like most succulents, it's important not to overwater these demogorgon-looking plants. Just like me, carry-on plants cannot tolerate temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius. So just make sure to keep it toasty. And as long as you treat your carry-on plant well, it's very likely to flower. In case you want your place to smell like rotting, stinking flesh, this is the plant for you. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Bye. In the case of the carry-on plant, this succulent is actually a member of a Poshinaceae. Oh, the same family as the dillweed. Carry-on plant flowers emit a rotting flesh stunch stanchi bu. He's bad. Carry-on flesh. Sorry, sir, that's gotta go in checked luggage. Your flesh has just gotta go. Carry-on plant flowers emit a rough. Honestly, honestly, any one of you could do my job better. Just. Email me and you got it. Instead of offering a sweet snack, the oviposit, <laughs> it looks like a large fleshy sunflower. No, no, starfish. Okay, really, I'm just a scatterbrained Sally. Everything about the size, shape, 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 sala, and sound, size. color, and scent of this agonism. Carry on. <laughs> I did it.